Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over our first tropical update of June. Uh, we're going to be talking about three potential tropical cyclones. We have already named Tropical Storm Bill, which is up near Nova Scotia. We have potential Tropical Storm Claudette, which is down in uh, southern Mexico and in the Gulf of Mexico. And that will be moving up further to the north into parts of Louisiana, maybe even into Texas. And then uh, touching parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and potentially the panhandle of Florida. And then we have Invest 94L, which could potentially become our next named tropical storm, uh, Tropical Storm Danny, uh, if it were to be named. So we have three different tropical cyclones, and who knows, we could even see a couple more uh, rise up. We're definitely starting to get into the uh, heart of the hurricane season now, uh, and we're definitely starting to get going with multiple storms going on uh, all at once. So here's what the current National Weather Service page looks like. Uh, as you can see, we're dealing with that heat wave out through the west. So we have these excessive heat warnings in this kind of purple color for uh, parts of California, Nevada, Arizona, uh, Utah, and also into a little bit of Colorado. And then for another patch in eastern Montana and northern Wyoming, we have red flag warnings for fire danger in parts of Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, uh, even into a little bit of uh, Nevada as well. So we do have some fire danger also into the western U.S. We have heat advisories which go along the coast of California into some parts of Nevada, a little bit of New Mexico, and then also for some parts of uh, Louisiana and southern Texas. Uh, and then other than that, we don't have many other watches or warnings. We have a few excessive heat warn or excessive heat watches in effect in that dark red for parts of central california but other than that not much else going on uh yesterday we had a high temperature tied between two areas death valley california and stovepipe wells california both of them got up to 118 degrees fahrenheit and the low temperature was 24 degrees in peter sinks utah uh the highest rainfall report was near brookings oregon where they got 4.49 inches it was actually in an elevated spot just east uh, of that city so in coastal oregon they had the highest precipitation report yesterday and the were no snowfall reports uh, yesterday as well. So here's the look at the two-day outlook. So this is just a way of seeing the chances of development over the next two days. You can of course see that we have Tropical Storm Bill already named up there in parts of the northern Atlantic and that'll be moving to the northeast. We also have uh, the next storm which could potentially become Tropical Storm Claudette. It has a 20% chance of developing over the next two days and then we have potential Tropical Storm Danny right now known as Invest 94L which is off the coast of Africa and it's moving just south of Cape Verde uh, off the coast of Africa. So it is starting to make its way a little bit further uh, to the east but that has a 10% chance of developing within the next uh, two days. If we look at the next five days, uh, you can see that chances do go up. So you can see that they're expecting development in through the western Gulf of Mexico and then also uh, in through the eastern Atlantic over the next uh, five days. And if we look at each individual storm, you'll see that the uh, first one, Invest 92L or potential tropical storm Claudette out in the Gulf of Mexico has a 70% chance of development within the next five days. And then in the eastern uh, Atlantic, just off the coast of Africa, that one still has a 10% chance uh, over the next five days. Looking first at Tropical Storm Bill, uh, you can see it's located at 39.7 degrees north by 63.9 degrees west. Maximum winds are 50 knots or 57 miles per hour. A minimum pressure of 998 millibars and a radius of circulation, meaning how wide the circulation of the storm is, is 90 nautical miles. Uh, and it's located, just to give you kind of an idea of how far away it is from uh, the coast, it's about 338 miles offshore of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Uh, 274 miles offshore of Nova Scotia and about 514 miles north uh, of Bermuda. So it is a fair bit away, but it will actually start to continue to make that same northeastward trek and eventually it might actually hit Newf Newfoundland uh, and maybe even into Nova Scotia uh, as well. So there will be some impacts, especially in southeastern Canada. Uh, if we look at the satellite imagery in the red circle area, that's where that storm is located. Uh, so you can, you can definitely see that we do have a little bit of circular in here there is a lot of shear up to the north so that should help break this apart we have a fairly high shear environment in those areas and 
We're also getting into water temperatures that are still in the 40s, even some 30s up there. So these are still really relatively uh, cold water temperatures for the storm to be going through. Right now it's in water temperatures between about 60 and 70, even down to 50 in a few of these spots. But it'll quickly shift up into the 40s uh, in terms of water temperatures as it's, as it's heading into uh, parts of the northern Atlantic. And as it's getting further up there, uh, closer to eastern Canada and also closer to southern Greenland. So it is going into a less favorable environment, but it's already named, so it ticks off one name off the list for this year. If we look at the track, you can see that it is expected, according to the National Hurricane Center, to continue to move to the northeast. Uh, and the main tropical storm impacts in terms of the winds have been on the lower side of this. So if you're looking at impacts, you if you live in, uh, let's say, just to the west of this track, you're probably not going to feel too bad of impacts. It's going to be the areas to the south of this track in Newfoundland that are going to be really feeling the impacts with tropical storm winds uh, so that'll be the main area I think the southernmost tip of Newfoundland is going to be where you're going to be dealing with the most uh, of these uh, tropical storm winds and this would be around 8 a.m. Uh, Atlantic Standard Time uh, when it is expected on Wednesday uh, to make landfall. So uh, in those areas, we're expecting it Wednesday morning uh, to start to make landfall in southeastern Canada. Here is the track over the next few days, over the next five days or so. And you can see it's expected to move near Newfoundland and then just kind of parallel uh, Greenland to the south. And then it'll move uh, into parts of Great Britain and just to the south of Iceland uh, and just continue to make its track through there so uh, it will eventually make uh, impact and land impact with uh, England although it probably will be very very uh, weak by that point so we're not expecting too big of impacts in Europe from this event if we look at the chances of tropical storm force winds again it's the southernmost tip of Newfoundland that has the highest chances you go a little bit inland on the northern end of this uh, and you're really not expecting too high of chances of seeing tropical storm force winds out of this if we look at the intensity guidance it is expected to quickly weaken Weaken, uh, because it's going into that less favorable environment with the colder waters and the higher amounts of wind shear that could tear the system apart. So here is the next system, Invest 92L, or potentially uh, Tropical Storm Claudette. It's expected to become a tropical storm, so I would assume over the next two uh, or three days, they'll probably have this one named. It's located eight, at 18.9 degrees north by 95.1 degrees west. Maximum winds of 20 knots, which is equivalent to 23 miles per hour. Minimum pressure, 1,009 millibars, and a radius of circulation around 150 nautical miles. So it is a fairly small system at this point, but it will continue to... To, uh, grow in size. It's located, just to give you a little bit of reference, 15 miles north-northeast uh, of Mexico. It's 505 miles offshore of southern Texas, and it's 70 miles east of Veracruz, Mexico as well. So uh, it's right in here uh, where Mexico kind of starts to bend uh, to the east. So it's right in there uh, in the southernmost part of the Gulf of Mexico, and this is going to continue to head uh, further to the north. This one has probably the best chance of developing into something that could potentially be a middle to maybe high-end tropical storm. Storm. We could even see this become a, a category one. We have seen that happen before where it's expected to be a tropical storm and then overnight it just kind of goes straight to category one status. As it starts to head probably closer to southern Texas, we might get some of the uh, NOAA aircraft to go into the storm and actually get a little bit more observations in there uh, and that'll really help the model guidance kind of narrow down what we're expecting with it. So here in the red circle is where the storm is located. You can see it's over an area of just cloudiness over the entire area of the eastern Gulf of Mexico and then down into southern Mexico. Uh, so just a bunch of clouds there. We have a lot of storminess uh, in this area, but notice the track area fairly clear. We're not having too much shear or anything that's going to potentially break this apart. So you have a fairly wide open gap here. We have water temperatures that are also into the 80s uh, in these areas, even some 90s. Uh, so very, very warm over these areas and that should help this storm uh, develop quite nicely so we're not expecting any uh, issues here but it is still definitely disorganized within this area so I can see why they didn't name it just yet we don't have the wind speeds up there and it's still not organized enough so we're going to need this to get a little bit further away from land uh, and once it goes over the open ocean I think it has a much better chance of rapidly developing if we look at the uh, model track guidance from the European ensemble model you can see it's expected to go pretty much straight north and then take 
a curve through the southeast so it's going to go just south of the Appalachians and then probably go out on the other side uh, of the Atlantic so maybe we could see some redevelopment on the back end here uh, but that'll probably be a um, an offshore storm so probably something like Bill uh, tropical storm Bill uh, that we might see as this redevelops on the other side of the Atlantic but again that's for uh, another day that's probably going to be something we might talk about in another five or seven days as uh, it continues to make its trek further to the east if we look at the model intensity guidance you can see that it is expected to kind of peak out uh, around a low to mid tropical storm uh, but again there are some models that are going on the high end and rapidly developing this and I don't see any reason why it can't do that uh, we have a fairly low shear environment no real uh, dust in the atmosphere that could impact that we don't have any of the uh, Saharan dust that's in the atmosphere, in the Gulf of Mexico at least, that could disrupt it. And we have fairly warm uh, sea surface temperatures. The only thing I, th I think that could disturb it is that storminess out east of there. Uh, so if th that could definitely be something that disturbs the storm and maybe uh, makes it a little bit weaker. And then I think this is a little bit low from the European Ensemble model guidance, but they're saying that over the next three to five days, the chance that it becomes a tropical storm or that you see tropical storm force winds are around 25 to 30 percent i think that is low i think it's probably closer to uh probably 60 or 70 percent if i had to make uh, an estimate but as we get closer to this event the model guidance will definitely narrow in and you'll probably see this amount bump up every single day uh, as we get closer to the formation of this event and then if you look at invest 94l which is the one that's off the shore of africa uh, it's located at 7.9 degrees north by 26 degrees west maximum winds at 25 knots or 25 or 29 miles per hour uh, the minimum pressure is 1012 millibars and the radius of circulation is 150 nautical miles uh, if you want to get kind of an idea of where this is it's located about 487 miles offshore or to the south of Brava Cape Verde uh, which is the southernmost tip of that country and the southernmost tip of that chain of islands 702 miles offshore of e of westernmost Africa and it's a thousand uh, 1114 miles north of Brazil so that's just kind of to give you an idea of where exactly this is here's what the uh, satellite imagery looks like it's on the very right hand side of your screen you can see that we have South America down here we have Africa all the way on the right hand side of your screen so it's kind of squashed right in between there and you can see we have some weak circulation but again it is mostly just disorganized thunderstorm activity by this point as it heads into this area this is where we're expecting most of the development also notice this, these kind of brown patches on your screen uh, you see this coming off of Africa and then also in the Caribbean that is the area of Saharan dust that could disrupt this so it looks like it probably this this area of Saharan dust is going to be moving to the west it might be able to do that in time for this uh, storm to continually stay on the back end of there to not really get impacted by any of that Saharan dust as it's actually moving through uh, so we'll have to see this is going to be definitely something we want to watch with this train of Saharan dust will this actually kind of make a gap for this to move through or will it have to go through uh, that Saharan dust and actually weaken uh, as it's doing so uh, and that'll definitely be something that we w we want to pay attention to because that could be a big factor on whether this develops into a hurricane uh, or it stays as a tropical storm or maybe even just a tropical uh, depression if we look at the uh, actual model guidance on this it is expected to kind of just make a straight west uh, northwest uh, track here it's expected to be uh, over the next about uh, five days or so it's expected to be in the Caribbean by that point uh, so again we're gonna have to watch out how exactly how far south does this go does it kind of just stay on the southernmost track which is that green line on the very southern end of this or does it take maybe this northern track which is in the medium green line or the red line uh, or the that that could definitely be a possibility if it takes that northern track we're probably dealing with a weaker storm the southern track probably a stronger storm because it's going to be further away uh, from all of that Saharan dust and then just looking at the GFS ensemble model guidance you can see pretty much the same story although this uh, bunch of models is actually taking this a little bit in, in kind of in the middle or maybe even a little bit on the northern end of this so uh, we're gonna have to see as we get closer to this event maybe as we can get some aircraft recon in here uh, we could definitely get a much better idea of what may happen with this event and if we look at the model intensity guidance all of these models are expecting this to get to tropical storm or at least most of them are expect uh, are expecting this to get to a tropical storm but we only can go out five days uh, or five and a half days on the on these models so we don't know if this is going to potentially get up to category one status or just stay as a tropical storm 
Here's a way of mapping all of the Saharan dust, not just by looking at the satellite imagery. So you can see we have one pocket, uh, and I'll actually change the color of my marker here. So we have one pocket up in uh, parts of the Gulf of Mexico, in the eastern half of the Gulf of Mexico. So this entire lane right here is clear and wide open for the storm, uh, for a potential tropical storm Claudette to move into uh, and make its track. So that looks like it's clear and open. We might have it interfere on the southern end of this, but then it does look clear after that we have a lot of saharan dust uh in parts of the eastern atlantic and the central atlantic as well as you're getting closer to africa and you can see that our area of uh, development is right within here so this is where the storm is expected to, to develop it will be dealing with the light amounts of saharan dust although it's not expected to be anything that's super uh impactful if this area of saharan dust can make its way further to the uh, west by the time that this uh storm actually moves into that area then this this could definitely strengthen a little bit more, uh, but if this storm kind of accelerates a little bit more, it might actually end up weakening before uh, it becomes a, uh, a hurricane or high-end tropical storm, whatever it actually ends up being. Here's the sea surface, the sea surface temperatures uh, in Celsius, and you can see that we're dealing with probably around uh, 27 to 29 degrees Celsius uh, all through these areas in the Gulf of Mexico, which would be right around 85 to about 80, uh, 88, 89 degrees Fahrenheit, so fairly warm out in the Gulf of Mexico. Also down here uh, off the coast of Africa, also very warm. Uh, but then what you really want to pay attention to, look up here in parts of uh, the northern Atlantic where uh, Tropical Storm Bill is it's going straight from the water temperatures that are going to be uh, near the 70s even the 80s uh, as it's going up the Gulf Stream and then as soon as that Gulf Stream kind of makes its, uh, its turn to the east it goes straight into water temperatures that are going to be closer to the 40s uh, and maybe even some upper 30s in terms of water temperatures so these are rather chilly waters as you get up here uh, near Canada and then eventually uh, further up into the northern Atlantic if it does go through those areas it'll probably drastically weaken and and also adding on with those uh, with the high amounts of wind shear that'll also help weaken the storm and then if we look at the ocean heat content this is also something that's going to be more important especially for the one in the Gulf of Mexico uh, you can see that we do have light amounts of ocean heat content which uh, is basically something that it's very important to look at its amount is a way of measuring how much uh, how much energy is actually stored underneath uh, the water and how much it can actually upwell and actually turn into um, energy for the storm so the higher these numbers are the higher the chance of uh, development or rapid development of these storms are and you can see that we don't have huge amounts through the Gulf of Mexico it's higher especially over the southern Caribbean uh, and especially near uh, areas in Central America but as you get closer to Mexico and the Gulf the Gulf Coast uh, as well. We're not dealing with as high of numbers. Uh, it's more on the low end of, uh, of things. So we're not expecting anything really major out of that that might be one of the things that can hold back uh, potential tropical storm Claudette as well as that we don't have a lot of ocean heat content uh, in, underneath the water and, and kind of stored in the water as well so uh, that is going to wrap it up for today's video please consider liking the video subscribing and turning on notifications and I'll see you guys in the next video goodbye